On several occasions during the year, we looked into the lives of people or things that took to the air. NAC's Boeing simulator, the Operation Deep Freeze comfort module. Then we made the astounding discovery that a Canterbury man may have been the world's first aviator, even before the Wright brothers. It is a late March afternoon, early this century. This quiet field is at Waitoe, five miles from Tamuka, and history is being made. I seen him fly. And where was that? In the paddock. In the paddock. Uh, it's very hard. If I, if I was only up there, I could show you where the where, 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 where the shed was. This is what the late Amos Martin saw rising hesitantly above the hedges more than 60 years ago. One of the first powered flights in the world. At the controls of this flimsy network of wire and bamboo was a young farmer, Richard William Pierce, an intense man who, in the quiet seclusion of his isolated farm and without any formal engineering training, had achieved one of man's ultimate ambitions, to fly. These are his plans, sketches which even today are remarkable for their precision, and yet he worked alone, with no help or no training. And then she rose about ten foot in the air, 10 to 12 foot in the air. Mm. And he, he only had about 50 yards before he got to the gorse fence. And he actually crashed into the gorse fence? No, not him. The plane. It was a remarkable craft. The engine had pistons ingeniously made from tobacco tins. Pierce also designed and constructed ailerons or flaps long before other aviators perfected them. He was driven by an intense desire to be the first man to fly. Did he succeed? Some people claim he did. On the 2nd of May, 1903. You're quite sure of that? I'm sure of that. I'll tell you why I'm sure of it. It was the year of the big snow. That place is one of Pierce's flights before the Wright brothers, but so little is known of his attempts that we will never know if he was the first. But his contribution to aviation is not in doubt. This is his second aircraft. It was more powerful than the first and included a startling innovation. The engine could be tilted from the vertical to the horizontal. It was, in essence, a helicopter as well as an aeroplane. In his writings, he spoke of this as his people's plane. How did you feel yourself when you saw this plane taking off into the air? Did you get a thrill? Well, yes, I got a thrill. And I also said, what a silly bugger he is. That's what I said to myself. Because he had absolutely no chance whatever of fearing the Gossens. No chance at all. Richard Pierce died in obscurity in 1953. This monument at Timaru Airport in a renamed street are the only visible evidence that in South Canterbury he made history.